So with Crisis Tree and CryEngine 3, CryTech has brought the next generation of visuals already without waiting for next generation consoles. I'm here at GDC to talk to Crytek about what they're doing to bring that next generation of visuals to other games and other unannounced platforms. We're always constantly uh, updating the engine whenever. Um, we've got a very active like R&D department, so we're always investigating either newer technologies or better ways to do current technologies to either uh, ease the load on the, the hardware or just make it a more simpler way to actually um, use the technology itself. So. One of the big pushes with CryEngine 3 and the updates that they're showing here at GDC is the idea of more believable worlds and the way that those worlds behave according to outside forces like wind and the environment and atmosphere without completely destroying the hardware that it's running on. We're more aiming towards, oh, just trying to run up the, the game situation to more be in line with uh, films. It's just more uh, extra enhancements to like really sort of bring the character into the environment rather than just running around a static corridor. So it's uh, everything's always interacting with each other. And there's a, a really nice sync between the physics system and the vegetation. And we've got like a breeze generation and uh, everything reacts. If you have a helicopter flying over everything, we can affect all the vegetation now and so we can have um, up to about two million vegetation um, objects on at once and they're all simulating depending on the wind and stuff. It's, uh, it's a very clever little system we're using. The funniest thing to me about talking with Crytek and some other developers here at the show is how unwilling they still are to talk about next-gen consoles uh, to the point where they won't even talk about what they're doing with PlayStation 4. I'm really curious as to at what point we're going to see developers think they're free to talk about things in a clearer way than we're hearing right now. I'm right. not mentioning nothing yeah. about that. So no one is talking about next gen yeah. console. No idea what you're talking about. Yeah. They announced the console <laughs> like a month ago. Spectre. What console? Spectre. I know. Um, obviously, we're a technology company, so we're obviously looking into um, platforms. Uh, so. Unannounced next-gen platforms? Yeah, and various things, but no, it's um, we're constantly driving to be the, the best and have um, the latest technology, and so uh, we're never going to turn our nose up at anything, so... Um. The sort of interesting thing to me about CryEngine 3 and Crytek's technology on the whole is that it's really powerful and clearly it's being used to make some of the most impressive games visually that we've ever seen but adoption from other parties that aren't in Germany uh, has been really limited. Mainly, uh, as well as just trying with the free SDK is to push that out to, uh, obviously, end users at home so they get more in involved in how the actual system works and thing. And then um, we run like the odd little competition here and there as well. Like, I think one we're doing with the universities in the UK is uh, off the maps. It's uh, a joining between um, British Library and so, Crytek and someone else. Uh, <laughs> um, unannounced third party. Uh, an unannounced next-gen person, no. They're reaching people that maybe thought, game development's too hard, or I'm not a designer, or this is all far too complicated for a normal person to do. And if they're going into schools and trying to reach students, then that's such a broader audience than people that might play Crisis 3 or want to do something like that and read about it on the internet. So it's a smart move. I'm not sure if it's as effective as what companies like Unity and Unreal are doing to get wider adoption of their engines, but it should be interesting to see how that plays out over the next few years.